Hey, amazing atheists, it's me, uh, Women29. Um, I got a few uh, private emails that uh, I should come on and uh, point by point uh, explain what I mean um, in defense of Christianity. And people are going to be all over this probably, but I'll never live up to uh, standards, so I'm just going to take a, a, a feeble shot at it. Um, in all your, um, uh, reading there, um, you forgot them to mention, uh, which is really important, the, um, role that the metaphor, uh, mythology, and rituals play in the course of science and history. Um, basically science is built on the foundations of the metaphor and uh, mythology. Um, you can't uh, discredit um, the uh, the uh, the father for what the son knows because he's definitely influenced um, by the father. Bad example, probably. However, um, what I'm going to do is uh, grab a really old, old. Probably this this predates probably um, Homer by probably 1,500 years, uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Been yapping about it a lot. Um, it's found in uh, many different cultures, uh, Sumerian, Babylonian. Uh, it even seeped over into Akkadian and Hittite, and even in the biblical text. Um, the most uh, glaring one is uh, the idea of um, Noah um, and the flood story, which is in the Epic of Gilgamesh, a separate story that was added in by scholars, and it's a definitely separate account. But um, there you have the building of the ark and, and the whole shot. And there you have the god deciding to destroy all mankind and, and the breath of life, and they do. So um, some of those stories are uh, go way, way back. And they're not just stories, because uh, they teach lessons about even what we're doing here, debating on things. And Gilgamesh, uh, who was a little bit God and man, um, even though he was all-knowing and blah, 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 uh, he still had to face death, which is an important question that uh, people have been dealing with ever since people have been around. And um, Enkidu, his counterpart, um, was from the wild, and he was Gilgamesh's competition, and he was civilized. civilized. He comes out, and uh, after his trip to the underworld, he comes back in a shade and laments ever being civilized. So here you have the conflict between the uh, primitive ideas and the civilized ideas which are taking part right here. However, um, they both would lament each other's death, as in the mythology, if one were to be, die, be killed or die off. So that's why it's important, because I believe that the metaphor and mythology complements. You also have a lot of allusions to the uh, Epic of Gilgamesh, because it's been around so much, and, and the gods have transformed into other things. Um, you have it in the... Uh, the um, rustic look of John the Baptist when he comes on the scene. Also, uh, the Gilgamesh story um, doesn't explain anything of his youth, just as in the text of Mark, which is probably the most um, seemingly accurate, uh, would start in the middle of Jesus' life, as it would in the Epic of Gilgamesh, starting in the middle. Later, uh, other stories uh, develop about acts and deeds and um, all the things that go on with hero worship. And there's nothing wrong with the transmission of myth through time. And that's one thing that science can't do, is explain the idea of the metaphor and how it's used. Karl Marx said the uh, religion is uh, the opium of the people. Um, sometimes that's true, other times it's not. Uh, there's been plenty of cases where religion and mythology and the metaphor have helped people fight against tyranny and assimilation. Um, one of them, well, obviously in the biblical text, um, you have um, the 
the fight against uh, assimilation to the Canaanite ideas, the Babylonian ideas, and later the Greek and Roman ideas, uh, mainly the Greek um, retaliation to uh, the Hellenistic views is found in uh, First and Second Maccabees, Maccabees, sorry, and um, the retaliation um, got pretty bad in 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 um, the fourth book of Maccabees, which isn't read much by uh, Protestant Christians. So what I'm about to say and go through here, uh, uh, no fundamentalist Christian is going to tell you. However, I'm a Christian and uh, I fully believe that. The, the observation of myth through time is not something that people have ripped off. It's always been done. Even even the uh, transition of science and, and how it flowed through societies, many people contributed, and sometimes at the end only one person claims the prize, unfortunately. But I, I still feel it's uh, important to recognize all the contributions made. So it's not that a person needs to become disillusioned because seemingly um, themes and motifs were borrowed from other stories. So I'm going to go through some of the points here. Um, as far as the contradictions, uh, yes, the texts of Jeremiah and a lot of the prophets um, had seemingly uh, contradictions in, because here you have different writers at different time periods, and also the, um, the prophets who were in the school of that prophet would uh, use the name of the prophet on the letters for credibility. And a lot of times, um, to prevent assimilation, like I said before, a lot of this material was an imagery and uh, metaphor was used as a propaganda tool in the fight against the onslaught of the Assyrians, Babylonians, and Egyptians that would come in and take over and try to assimilate the Israeli population. And it worked because um, as we know from the Persian Empire, they were able to come back and rebuild. And not only uh, did that work, but it also happens in modern day cases where uh, you had the, um, the prophet Black, um, Black Elk, in his book uh, Black Elk Speaks, uh, he, he has a vision, he comes back, he creates the horse dance as a ritual to explain it abstractly to his community, and through that, they were able, able to overcome the assimilation policies that the United States put forth. Even though at some points it s seems that they were un unsuccessful, they're still medicine men today, and it wasn't totally wiped out, as some cultures have been. So religion and metaphor used in that way can actually uh, be very beneficial. Um, also, let's see, he talked about... Uh, Um, let's see, the God Gap. In the Ancient Near Eastern text, um, almost everyone um, uh, combined religions and observation of their environment. So it was hand in hand, and uh, I don't think it's in proper context to uh, take modern beliefs and impress them on the past myth mythology and think that they're only fairy tales and didn't contribute anything. Um, they very much contribute... Um, to how we think and how we view it, and even even the whole um, idea of space exploration and going outward, and the journey outward uh, came from people um, uh, who who at first had a foundation um, in early Egyptian and Hittite and um, Babylonian cultures. The astronomers started looking at the skies and figuring all this stuff out. So they did contribute. Um, Let's see, let's see, even secular stories, fairy tales composed of this, we will still use it today. As science progresses, these stories will be obsolete, and once more, the metaphor will change. However, it is wrong to impose science, religion, and theology on primitive culture and dismiss them as fairy tales and as non-essential. They stood in the place and bridged the gap to what we have today as science. Christ's crucifixion. Uh, the scapegoat idea has been around for a long time. Um, and uh, let me find the reference there. In Leviticus 16, um, here you have two, two mythologies running together. You have the Yahwehistic uh, mythology, and you have um, the Canaanite, or Persian, it could be too, uh, Aziel. So two goats were sent out into the wilderness, one for Yahweh and one for Aziel as a sin offering. And so... Um, 
the Day of Atonement uh, was evolved into the uh, idea of the crucifixion. So uh, the most um, honorable way in the face of tyranny um, to die in the Roman era, era was, you know, on being crucified. Because that's what they did. Um, in the Greek culture, it would have been something else. You know, you would have you would have been beheaded or, or put on the stretch racks. You find that in uh, Maccabees 4. So, um, different, in different ways, different people um, showed their resistance and rebellion to the new um, mythology and motifs and rituals that were being forced on them by the Roman, Greek, and Babylonian um, uh, um, religions, and especially the uh, Roman imperial cult. Uh, you know, caused people. So not only Christ, there was, you know, hundreds of people being sliced and diced. Um, let's see. You're correct on the divorce. However, uh, some denominations do not hold this view and still do not allow divorced um, people to be members or teachers in church. Um, this raises a lot of social issues, uh, especially in um, cases of abuse. So... They're still trying to struggle with that one. Um, let's see. Feelings and morality. Yes, a big one. If you're a Christian just to feel good, no good. If you're a Christian just to be moral, no good either. Um, a lot of times I, I think uh, Buddhism uh, dealt with this the best way. Um, so you're saying that, um, well, you would say that you should be Christian um, or you should do good for the sake of doing good, not because uh, your reward is a selfish desire, which in the end would be would be heaven. So, so I don't know. Uh, I I think that the metaphor mythology plays an important role, and uh, I don't think the whole thing should be scrapped. And I think that um, that those kinds of ideas, if viewed as literature, and and the most dangerous part is happens when. They are taken as real or as an errant. That's when it becomes seriously dangerous. And uh, my view of it is that in all those things, you know, there's there's kernels there's kernels of truth that were built upon. Um, you know, they in the king list, the Sumerian king list. Uh, there there's definitely a you know a guy named Gilgamesh, but we don't know anything about him other than the stories that circulate. You know, and and. And outside of mythology and the lessons they teach, um, you can't necessarily, you know, pinpoint a historical day on, you know, say he was here. So, uh, and and that's how it always works. Uh, trips to the underworld, that's that's how we get all of our information, the abstract. And and religion is, is only, it's kind of like the only tip of the iceberg, but you have this, this whole other part that's really huge in the super subconscious that people don't know about or that people can't ac accurately describe and it ends up being brought up in abstract forms into which um, we uh, call mythology. And the important part of rituals is that it, it marks certain events and, and that seems to be the problem nowadays because you know people perform less and less rituals. Um, there's no defining moments in their lives um, that tell them when you are definitely a man, when you are definitely a woman, because a lot of those primitive rituals have been taken out of society. Um, only in the religious section do you get really strong um, identif identification on certain periods of your life. And a lot of times, in order to explain a lot of the issues um, 